After almost five years of using Blender, this is still my favorite type of scene to make, where it's not necessarily following the rules. It's not something realistic, it's just me exploring this cool idea and having fun. And um, yeah, so if you want to see me make this surreal space animation right here, we're just going to get right into it. Okay, I want to start off by making these like weird, intricate platforms. They're not really based off of anything real. I think I have these models in here that I've already made. I want to make some new ones because I just don't feel like using the exact same ones that I've been using so much. But uh, the inspiration the inspiration for this came from an AI generated post by uh, an account called I am sentient, all one word, or all uh, no spaces. I mean, I am sentient, and they had this one post where it had these like really weird, surreal square platform things that are just this crazy. I don't even know what it was, but anyways, that I, I liked that post a lot, and I, I made some platforms that were kind of a similar style to that, and that's where this render came from over here. Uh, these weird like surreal who even knows what kind of style that is, but these crazy platforms that are just in space. I'm going to make some more of these and then use this and then probably do something similar, uh, kind of space, surreal, like weird, um, enlightenment kind of vibe. It's a little bit unsettling, but it's also just cool to look at. Uh, so this kind of thing, I, I really like this kind of style. It's, it's, really hard, it's kind of hard to put this feeling into words, but uh, it's a little bit easier to put it into a, a picture. So that's what I'm gonna try and do. So yeah, let me just start by making these weird platforms. Uh, and then uh, we'll we'll take those and, and create like this kind of astral plane type of thing after, after that based off these. So I was practicing a little bit before this recording. And I think the easiest way to do this is like, just kind of, not, there's not really any structure to it. It's kind of just like take a thing and like I kind of start extruding it all over the place. Uh, there is a little bit of like, it's it's hard to explain what I've been even doing. I'll just kind of show you exactly what I mean. So there's no right way to do this. It's just kind of like, you know, make some some cool patterns that seem like they would kind of fit in space. So I'm just gonna start by adding loop cuts and extrusions and just start by making a very simple pattern. And then this is gonna be a building block that I can use and repeat all over the place. Um, so let's just start with something like that. I know I also want a piece that's going to be a square piece. So we'll just, uh, let's put the cursor back here. I'm going to also turn on screencast keys so you can see what button I'm pressing. So we'll enable that. Okay, so we'll take, uh, there's this cube right here. Um, I'm going to scale this out and delete the top and bottom faces. So we'll delete that. And then I'll just uh, Alt-E extrude faces along normals and just pull this this way. And then that's going to give me this kind of square piece. And then I'm going to have another one that's maybe like a smaller version. And then these we can use in a, in a really useful way and just kind of throw these onto the corners in like all these weird places. This kind of reminds me of like, I don't know, like the, the kind of pattern that we're going for reminds me of like a really old Pokemon game of like some weird creature that you'd find in like some messed up place. I don't know. That's just kind of the, the first thing that pops into my head. Uh, we could do the same thing also on these things. And, and what I mean is like some weird pattern that like isn't really recognizable as like a a thing that you would see anywhere in the world, but it just looks kind of cool. Uh, anyways, let me extrude that, scale that in on the shift Z, and then we can right click bridge edge loops there. And that'll give us that kind of shape. So that's good. And maybe let's just kind of straighten this out a little bit. So it's a square doesn't need to be perfect, it needs to be kind of roughly right, and there we go. And then, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll add more details slowly on here, but this is the kind of idea, right? And we can, you know, duplicate this. Maybe let's make this one kind of smaller and then attach this one from the smaller one. Maybe scale that up, I don't know, like, I don't know if this is supposed to be like there or up here or both, or I'm not sure. But yeah, let's take that. That can kind of just get attached in some weird places along here. And then let's just take a few more of these little squares and this can like go in some of these corners. All this will get joined together at the end. But for now, I'm just kind of throwing together this crazy piece that's going to be used all over the place. One thing I might do is take a few of these like top squares, maybe this section, maybe, maybe actually the whole thing. And we'll inset that um, on the individual faces. And then we can kind of take this, extrude it upwards a little bit. And then we've got a little bit more detail in there. I'm gonna bring that down just a bit. I'm gonna be beveling this slightly with the modifier, so I need to be careful. 
And looking at this, I don't actually like what I did there. So I'm going to undo that. We'll deselect these ones and then run that again. So inset and just extrude that up a slight amount, not too much, but right there. And then that one's going to be empty along here. That's good. And then let's just Alt D, maybe, maybe not Alt D actually, let's uh, Shift D that in case I want to make some changes. We can just kind of make this kind of a, a fractal. So having like repeating parts of itself over itself um, might be interesting. And then that can kind of just get used to, to make this shape look a lot more complex without actually having to do that much new work to it. So I'll have this here, maybe scale it by negative one to like flip it on this axis. This thing doesn't really belong here anymore. So we can kind of put that there. We'll put uh, some other little smaller squares in here. And on these things too, we can like do all these little extrusions along here and like um, maybe like inset a few of these, extrude that out, you know, like just adding little details all over the place. Let me apply the scale. We'll hit okay on that. Uh, boom, Alt E, extrude faces along normals to pull this out a little bit. And yeah, let's do, let's do an inset on here as well. Uh, let me actually apply the scale. Uh, we'll just say, okay. So inset, extrude faces along normals, just a little bit there. That's nice. And then if I want, I can link, link all these, all these uh, smaller square squares, apply scale. Uh, it doesn't want me to do that. I guess there's one of them that isn't quite the same, but we'll hit control L object and data that kind of worked, but messed up a couple, a couple of them. I think they weren't all linked when I, when I did that. So anyways, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because we're getting the same kind of thing here. So that's fine like this. Okay. So that's going to go there. Uh, this could be a little bit bigger. Let's go individual origins, scale that up a little bit. And yeah, so we're on, we're on the right track. I'm going to get to texturing this. So we've got these two main things. I, I like this where it's at. So I'm going to hit, uh, we'll hit uh, object relations, make single user object and data. I'm going to click that. And then we're, we're just going to apply scale and then control J to join it. I might throw on a bevel modifier. Let's, let's see if that actually even shows up on here. Looks like it is. It's just enough that uh, it's working. So that's actually a good amount right there. So that's fine. Now to texture this, there's a couple things I want. Number one, I want like the base of the material to be this kind of uh, stone kind of material. So I'll see if I can find a rock texture. I'm just going to go to the asset browser and then to the polyhaven section here. This add on is um, so this is an add on from Polyhaven. Polyhaven is a website where you can just get free textures. This is their paid add-on, which basically, it just downloads their free textures, all of them into the asset browser and then auto categorizes it, which is really helpful. It's like 30 bucks. I'm not like affiliated. I'm not associated with them at all. I just have been using this because it's handy. Uh, anyways, for for a rock texture, I'm just gonna search. Uh, actually there's, yeah, rock in here, stone wall. This looks like it's going to work. So I'm going to drop that on. Let's just go in here. And I just need a, a base for the kind of things that I'm going to layer on top of this, which is going to be like patterns and tiles and stuff. So let me let me apply this scale and then we'll just cube project this entire thing. We'll go to uh, edit mode and just kind of scale that up on the UV map. And then I'm going to switch this actually to the 4K texture. So 4K. That's another handy thing about this add on is it just lets you toggle between the different resolutions here. So that's good. And mostly I just need the roughness and normal map. Uh, definitely don't want the displacement. I'm going to take out the displacement and delete that. And then I want to get a light in here just so I can see kind of the specular highlights that this is, texture is going to have. Uh, there's not going to be any right now, but when I uh, kind of start bringing this into an environment, I want to see how this is going to look with a nice reflection. Because I know I want to have like, uh, if we go back to that original image, I know I want to have some sort of like big light source at the end that's going to be really bright. So I want to see how it's going to be reflecting off this texture. So we'll have kind of a representation of that right here. And then we'll use that as a guide to, to manipulate this texture the way I want. One thing I'm going to do is bring in some textures, uh, some patterns and stuff. So this is a folder of some uh, some patterns from Mid Journey that I, I was testing out a long time ago, but it still is going to work nicely. It's just these weird, like, ancient inspired Aztec weird, Mayan weird, uh, I don't even know what you'd call this, but 
basically patterns like this that are just intricate AI patterns. So I'm going to drop that on here. Um, I think this one will work well. I could make some new ones with the updated mid journey, but I don't think these will be a problem. So drag and drop that into the shader editor. And then there's a lot we can do with this. Like we can run this into the base color and use that to kind of drive some, some color patterns, or we could run it through the roughness. Uh, let's start with the color first and let's see where we get with this. And then I'll th try running it into the roughness and see what happens as well. I think I'm going to use just a color ramp to make this black and white and then just really crunch this, multiply that in there. And I don't want this to be like fully multiplied in. I might switch this actually to, to overlay. That might give a nicer result. And I can also hit uh, control T on here and then just start messing around with the scale of this. So, ooh, it actually looks cool to have it up higher. Yeah, having this on like two or four might be cool. So that's interesting. We could also use this image to generate a normal map using the deep bump add-on. I don't know if that's going to look that good here, but we could try it. One thing that we'll try as well is running this through the roughness. So I'm going to take another mix RGB. This one I will switch to multiply. And then I'm going to run that image, that pattern into the slot B of the roughness. And we'll just throw that on. Now it's going to be way too shiny at first, but let's take a color ramp and just kind of start tweaking this. Um, so I want it to be kind of like this, where it's just barely showing up. Now this, I think, needs to be higher up, so we don't have to have this on zero. It can just be a little bit here that makes some of these areas a little bit more shiny. And then if we want to, we can kind of do this, like make the, what we're doing now is like making the, the original roughness map more rough so that there's more of a difference when I start mixing this new one in. Uh, just so that there's more contrast between low roughness from the original roughness map, or, or sorry, rather high roughness from the original roughness map, like very rough, and then low roughness, lower roughness from this uh, from this pattern. And just, I, I want to distinguish the difference between those two a little bit more if I can. And I want to be careful not to make it too low roughness because when I animate this, that's going to introduce a lot of flickering with this rock, like this really rough rock texture. That's fine. I might try inverting this. Let's try inverting this on the color, the base color right there. Yeah, that, I think that's giving me the more of the result I wanted. I want it to be, yeah, like that, like darker. So we're getting somewhere, right? This is kind of interesting. I think it might be a little bit too, too much here. We'll just scale it up to a little bit bigger. And we can also just swap this entire image out for something else too. Like it might look cool to just start bringing in other random patterns here. Uh, something circular is probably not going to be that good, but you know, one of these other ones, I think that was the same one or no, it wasn't, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff we can mess with here. I like where this is at. Uh, I don't quite like the color, so maybe I'll try and bring in some other texture for, uh, to like add some other interesting colors here. I think we just need like a grunge or um, some, yeah, some kind of grunge map. So I'm going to go to textures. We go to, I have this folder from textures.com. So maybe uh, some tiles like this. I think I actually used this one on the original or something like this it might be nice. Or uh, even just like some metal. I might try these tiles. These might be cool. So I might mix this in. Uh, so we'll just go run this into slot B instead of overlay. I'm going to switch it to mix actually. And then I'm going to run this into the factor as well. And we can kind of use itself to, to say, uh, to, to use the black and white or the, uh, use the brightness values of, of, uh, this image here. I'm not sure what's not showing up here. There we go. Use the brightness values of this image to determine which parts get mixed in and which don't. Uh, and when you have it on mix, it'll like fully fully mix it in too. And then I think I need to press control T on this as well and increase the scale. Not too much, but just maybe like one or two. So that's a lot of detail that's going in there. It's a bit too much. So I'm going to dial this down, maybe flip it around and then just kind of have this barely getting mixed in. Uh, it's a little too much there, I think.
Yes, just a little bit would be nice. Just to bring in a, a little bit of kind of natural color from, from a real image is always nice. And that's too much, but uh, maybe we can decrease, either bring this entire thing up a little bit or even take the white handle and just drop the value of the white handle to make it mix the total mix amount a bit less. So maybe I'll drop that down to like 0.5, I don't know. That's kind of nice there. And then I can also start adding like some edge wear. That may or may not be nice, but we'll try it. Uh, let's go to my user library. I have this node for it, Edgeware. Uh, if I drop this in, basically, just it's just using ambient occlusion to like highlight the outer edges. If you want to look at exactly how this is working, it's this setup right here that is the main thing. This is optional noise. Uh, this is the main thing right here. Ambient occlusion with inside and only local, and then the distance is way down at 0.02. Uh, it's running through that, but it's that's the amount right there. It's like 0 0.01, 0 0.02. That's how you isolate those edges, and then you can kind of mix it in like this. I have a video where I showed this, kind of a rougher version of this. In uh, there's a video of mine called like texturing and adding edgeware. You'll find it on my channel if you search for it. Uh, the other thing you can do is actually use another ambient occlusion with inside and only local unchecked, and actually subtract that from the original one. What that will do is it'll limit the edgeware to only be in the proper places so you won't get it on like the inside creases of the model uh, where it's not actually supposed to be so that's really nice this is like extremely detailed right now uh, so i might dial this back a bit also this i have this ambient occlusion like not edgeware but actual ambient occlusion running in here i'm gonna bypass that and just run it straight out because i don't want that well maybe i do actually you know what i do like it so we are gonna keep that on there there's a couple problem areas on here that uh, are a bit bad. See that? Like, we're running into a couple of issues here where this is overlapping a bit too much. So I'll just scale that down, and that should be fine. Uh, same thing here. Like, if we start running into these bad areas, we can just kind of move this around to accommodate for that. That's no problem. This method is fine as long as there's not too much overlapping geometry like you saw there that's when you start running into some weird issues like along here and stuff. So we'll hit control L, we'll take these, bring that down a bit. And that's looking pretty good. Okay, let's take these and let's start building a scene with it. So uh, I'm gonna go to the camera view here. We'll just go to rendered view and snap it to the camera. So let's bring this up. I want it to be like 24 millimeters. And then I also want it to be like roughly walking height-ish above this surface. So I should probably add a, a cube in here. We'll just Alt-G, move it up one, scale it in, and then just scale it down to like 0.85 or 0.9. And this is roughly the height of a person right here. So uh, I think I want the camera a little bit higher up than that. Not by much though. And then I'll scale these platforms to the kind of shape that I'm imagining for this to be. So I want it to feel as if you could kind of like hop from platform to platform if you were in this place. That's the kind of scale that I'm going for. So that seems about right. Like if you're walking along here, kind of kind of picture like uh, if you're on the beach and you're kind of walking along rocks and you're kind of jumping from rock to rock, that kind of thing, but like a surreal space version, surreal space version of that. Uh, so that's the kind of scale I want to go for here. So we'll have that there. Seems nice. And I might have to re uh, or uh, adjust the ambient occlusion scale because when you scale the model, the edge wear thickness will be like pro will not be proportional to the model. It'll just kind of be independent from that. So I have to uh, maybe decrease that a little bit, but it, not a big deal. Maybe the amount can come down a little bit as well. You can always adjust this. Okay, so we'll have this right there. Now let's just kind of. We have these two things. I'm going to move these to a collection. So move collection, we'll call it uh, platforms. We'll just have it there. And then this, uh, let's do this. Let's just start moving this around. I'm going to press Alt D and just kind of randomly start rotating this stuff. Uh, and since we have a couple of different variations, you probably won't notice a pattern with, with uh, the amount of, even if I duplicate this a hundred times, probably won't be able to tell as long as I kind of break up the pattern intentionally by rotating and scaling it. 
so we'll just kind of whoops r90 right there we go and then we could even take chunks of these and start duplicating that and then we can also separate some individual pieces from this like we'll take this whole chunk we'll shift d right click to cancel separate by selection take this origin back to geometry scale that up as its own little thing and that can kind of just be placed around here as like some bigger chunk that is going to be used to break up this pattern even further we could even just take this one uh, square thing here separate that by selection origin back to geometry this is a little bit tight and crowded in here so maybe let's take this this way and just have like kind of a pattern break up by having this kind of square in here so that can go there I want this to all be somewhat flat so that's nice uh, square can go here square can go over here over here and there we go okay let's bring the camera down a little bit maybe and also rotate it downwards slightly more okay let's take this thing down a bit this thing's really chunky and then I think what I also want to do is rotate all these like to a 45 degree angle which is what I had in my other one so we'll just go to individual origins here we'll just grab like uh, go to side view and then grab kind of everything here deselect this stuff and then uh, maybe I could just do this like rotate on the Z axis by 45 degrees and then we'll try to find a good composition here and, and some kind of setup where it works with the the camera angle that we're at but I think this will be fine uh, these platforms are a little bit messier than I intended and wanted but uh, should be okay we'll, we'll make it work you know uh, this I just need it just doesn't feel quite right here these things all are a little bit too chunky like I think this yeah if I could just take this down like here let's do this let's turn on uh, correct face attributes so that when I move this around the texture kind of say, stays the same size and then maybe I can just kind of make this the same thickness roughly as all these other things and then just line them up like somewhere here um it's gonna be a little bit tough but even if it doesn't line up perfectly i can just kind of do this and then it should be okay and we'll just kind of slot this in somewhere uh, maybe i can just it's gonna take a little bit of uh, finicking around but we'll kind of just yeah something like that's fine and that was uh that's now applied to all of them right because they're all uh, they're all linked duplicates so that fixes all that this is now an issue we'll just uh, grab this chunk right here and just throw it there or over here okay let's actually set up the scene so i'm going to go to the world settings and we'll just take the background let's drop that down to zero this is random light over here i'm going to delete that and then uh let's just drop in i'm actually going to add another point light back in here just for now or maybe I'll add uh, an image plane straight away. Let's do that. Let's uh, let's just grab a plane. We'll just uh, put the cursor over here. So I'll have uh, the way I want to do this. I think is to have some like big light source on a plane. Uh, I'll just turn up the emission, and then we're gonna drop an image on here. So I'll try and find something that's gonna work. Uh, might have to be from Unsplash. It might just be some random weird pattern that I make on a circle or a square or something. Uh, what can I see? But um, I might just start dropping stuff in here, and just kind of start messing around. I don't. I'm not trying to go for like a realistic planet or something. I'm just trying to see like what kind of interesting textures might work on here. You know, um, that looks kind of cool. Actually, this might work. This random moon image. Uh, we're getting glow because of uh, the compositor I have on. That's on by default. I'm gonna take that off for me. So there we go. And then we need volume in here. And then I'm going to put a sky in the back as well, probably just like a starry night sky kind of thing. So let me, let me first of all add a cube, and we'll display it as bounds. There's a shortcut I'm pressing. You can do that in this orange square tab. Go down to uh, viewport display, and then display as bounds. You can assign a shortcut here if you right-click. So that's what I'm doing there. This, I'm going to add a volume scatter material. So just volume scatter, plug that in, 0. 0.0 something on the density, right? And then we'll just maybe drop that down a bit. It's a bit intense. And we'll kind of do something like this. We need a, uh, another plane behind this, which uh, we cannot see because the camera view distance is only at 100 meters. I should turn that up for my default file. I haven't done it, but there we go. We'll take this down, move it uh, far enough in the back that you can't 
really tell that it's like a just an image plane background. And same thing here. We can't see this anymore. So view, end point. We'll just make that higher. Okay. And then on here, we need uh, a different texture. So I'm going to take that off. Uh, sorry. Object and data. Then take that off. Oh, I see. Okay. Sorry. There we go. That is working properly. So new. And then uh, let's just drop an image of uh, some stars or some night sky or something on here. I have these ones from mid journey. It saved them as a dot web P. I have no idea what that kind of file even is. I don't even know how that's working, but anyways, that is actually somehow still able to drop in here. So that, that works. Uh, but it's just a regular image from mid journey. I just kind of, what I did was I dropped in a, uh, image of a regular, like real night sky into mid journey as like the reference image to like generate more based off that one. And I think the original I dropped in was from something from unsplash. So, it was a, uh, I'm not going to find it in here, but it's some random night sky, some, you know, just a background of stars, something like that with a bit more colorful somewhere in here. But I dropped in a real image of that. And then mid journey gave me a bunch of variations of like that sort of style of thing. So that may or may not work here. Um, we'll see, but I'm going to try. So we'll run that into the color emission color and, uh, and alpha as well. And that's kind of nice. I kind of like that. Uh, to extend this, I might just do this. If we just have correct face attributes on, mm, you know what? If, I might be able to get away with this. If I just, uh, let's put the cursor here on this edge. So cursor to selected, just move it down to that edge. And then I'm just gonna move the pivot point to the cursor. And then I'm gonna hit Alt D S Y Y minus one, just to flip it on the local Y axis by like flip it around on that axis basically, uh, just so that now we're kind of getting this mirror effect, which isn't ideal, but it's going to be better than it just kind of being, uh, you know, like chopped off like this, like a clear line there. So hopefully that kind of hides it. Um, and that should be okay. Uh, as long as I just kind of cover this up with volume or put some other objects in the way, we should be fine there. So I'll, I'll drop this uh, down there like that. We could even use a, a principled volume. And that way we kind of get some like volume absorption mixed in a little bit. Uh, if I just drop this down to like 0 0.00 or point, uh, point 0.05 maybe. Uh, sorry, point 0.005. Uh, and then anisotropy up. See how it kind of gets darker in the distance as it goes down? That's kind of what I want. And yeah, I might... Uh, yeah, there we go. That's quite nice. So that handles it a little bit better than... Uh, than the volume scatter does in this case because I actually want it to be darker as it goes down. So that's good. So sweet. I want to increase the volumetric or the volume. I always make that mistake. Volume light bounces is what it's called uh, from zero to like two, three, one, two, something like that. So that'll be fine there. Uh, this moon is like ginormous. I'm going to move that back a bit or just make it smaller. Let's, let's just make it smaller. Uh, it looks like very out of place a little bit here. So we'll, I'll see if I can do something to like, you know, uh, oh, we didn't, didn't need that. We just need this here. Something to like make this fit in a little bit more, whether I like mix in some warm tones or I don't know, we'll, we'll kind of have to just figure that out as we go. Uh, so one thing with this is you can see, I want it brighter, but if I increase the brightness enough to the point where it kind of lights up my environment nicely like this it's like completely blown out. Um, so it might be better to actually split it up into two sections of lighting, one being like the actual emission itself, and then another light, which is actually a point light, not an emissive surface. And that will actually probably be better lighting uh, that will light up the environment a lot easier than trying to use a, an emissive plane. So one thing I'm gonna make the color dark so I don't, I don't actually light it up from the light, the, the emission plane here. And then on the light here, and then uh, on the light here, I'll just take this, make it like kind of bright. And what I want to do is um, you're getting this glow because it's running through the volume and it's just making it really bright. So you can actually just disable the volume scatter for that specific light. And now we actually, we get all the nice reflections and stuff, but it's not um, glowing and like lighting up the volume unnecessarily because it just looks bad. So that's a nice effect there. I'm going to take this color and maybe just paste it into that light. Uh, we'll, we'll have to make it like way less saturated and just kind of blend it with 
the color that's kind of coming that looks like it's coming from this so something like this um this is kind of a problem here where oh i see that's just because of the the mission emission strength isn't that high uh if i take the specular down that will eliminate that reflection off of this so you see that the reflection from that light you can just remove that by taking the specular down on the moon because i don't want it to be reflecting the light the only reason this light is here is to make it look like this moon is emitting more light than it actually is it's maybe decrease the amount a little bit it's maybe unnecessarily intense uh this can be a bit brighter yeah like that and then uh what else should we do here maybe the volume scatter or the the volume uh principal volume can be a little bit thicker or a little bit brighter and that will make it appear more thick so that's fine there uh so this is i can probably just join these together actually we can scale that down a little bit line that up there okay uh this chunky thing here needs to come down a bit it's just way too big uh, this can come in here okay now we need a bit more of this stuff just kind of going out into the horizon so i'm probably just going to take a big cluster of them and just literally duplicate that out straight how it is like that so that's going to be fine right whatever cool and you know as this gets further out into the horizon you're not going to be able to tell that it's repeating the further out that gets, the, the less you'll notice that. Even with repeating textures that are like just one texture repeated infinitely, the further out into the horizon it gets, generally it's going to be harder and harder to tell as it gets closer to that horizon line just because it's so, it's, it's like you're, the angle you're looking at it at is so low that whatever. Uh, this is a problem here where we're getting stars behind the moon, which because, because I'm just using an alpha, uh, like, the colors driving the alpha of the moon but now stars are showing up behind the moon anytime i see that in a render it just bothers me so i'm gonna i'm gonna add a circle because that's not how this works right you don't see stars in front of the moon that makes no sense so to, to prevent that uh, i don't think anyone cares but i care so i'm gonna quickly do this we're gonna rotate this uh this way we'll just kind of line this up i'm gonna go into render view here so that i can actually see where this is lining up so i, I need a plane that is the same size as this circle of the moon line it up at the top and then that will also cover the bottom and then uh, we'll just drop that in just right behind this and it, it just needs to be black so color uh drop that down to zero and then uh, roughness one and then specular zero and now we're good uh so see that now that just covers up properly the you know the random stars that are back there it's a little bit I feel like it's a little bit stretched out looking. So I'll just scale it down on the z-axis a little bit. And, uh, you know, now it's not fully realistic because we are, like, changing the... Well, it's not a regular circle anymore, but whatever. It looks better if I shrink it down on this way slightly. Uh, not too much, but just slightly. So that's nice there. I don't want it to be this close to the camera. Like, we're, we're very close there. So I'm going to move this back a bit. And I can just scale it up to compensate for the, you know, the smaller size. In the in the picture so i'll increase this our volume's too thick now and you you see how this is all kind of like this balancing act where i'm moving one thing that kind of messes up another thing you got to change the volume back to match that thing and then oh like some other issue appears now the brightness of this thing isn't bright enough so we gotta brighten up the point light but then maybe that will affect something else so you kind of have to go in this circle of like fixing little issues as you change things and you know that's just that's just part of it it's just how it works the anisotropy it's at 0.9 i kind of like it really high but it's a little bit not it's a little bit unnecessary. Uh, so this, I'm going to bring this brightness down a little bit. The point light, we can make this bigger to match the size of this. And then we'll increase that a little bit. And maybe a little bit more. Maybe like 18, whatever. And I'll just kind of bring this in and out. So you see what that's doing? That point light is giving us some nice reflections. Making it appear as if this moon is actually much brighter than it is without having to crank up this emission strength super ridiculous, right? So that's that's nice there. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Uh, we're not there yet, but we are getting somewhere. Uh, okay, so if I want this volume to be a bit more like, you know, uh, darker as it gets into the distance, 
uh, there's one, there's a couple things I can do. I could just try cranking up the density and then lower the, the brightness. And then that way we're still getting that darkening effect as it gets further into the distance, but it, it's, uh, the actual glowiness isn't as much. So that's one option that kind of works actually. So I'm going to run with that. The other thing would be to like mix in a principled or a, rather a volume absorption, which kind of does something similar with a bit more control. But yeah, that this is working fine. Uh, I could, ooh, that's nice. It looks like kind of like a split toning effect, but whatever. Um, yeah, anyways, having, I usually don't color this, but it just looks nice here, so I'm gonna keep that, that's fine. Okay, this could be a little bit brighter, so I'm just increase that to like two or whatever. Move this a little closer maybe. You don't need to, if you're gonna like recreate this render, you don't need to copy the exact settings I'm, I'm showing you. And the reason I'm telling you what I'm doing isn't so that you can just copy the numbers that I'm inputting. That's really not the point I'm trying to make here. I'm trying to, the point I'm trying to make is like the, I'm trying to show the creative decisions that I'm making and explain why I'm doing certain things. Not necessarily, it's not really about like what values I input into the text field, you know? I'm gonna drop in some models. Um, let's just do, I don't know, I feel like we need some, we need like some gothic or like fantasy or like arches or something like that. So let's go to, um, honestly, honestly, I'll just use the, yeah, this will work. The, the, these are some models from uh, the fantasy course, or no, sorry, the, uh, the environments course that I put out last year. If you wanna access these, I'll just leave a link below to the, the course, which comes with this whole pack that you can see here. But I think these will work for the kind of like surreal, weird vibe that I'm gonna go for in here. I don't know exactly how this is gonna fit in, but I know like there's there's a lot of stuff in here that's going to work. Uh, it maybe not arches, but definitely like yeah, like some giant pillars or something. This will be cool. So we'll have that in there. Um, I don't know if I need some in the distance or there's a big arch in here as well, temple arch. This will work. I don't know how big this should be, but this fits right in. And we can have some like structures below this entire uh, surface as well. So, you know, we could have like this and, and this kind of crazy stuff here. Um, somewhere like down here, I don't know. It might be cool to have like... Uh, some, I don't know, some like square of things like this, I don't know. I'm just kind of making this up as I go, but I think this will work. Just so that uh, what I want is basically as we're passing over this, or like as we're, as we're the camera's gonna be moving forward. So as we're moving forward through here, I want this kind of parallax effect where we're getting, the foreground is gonna, move, gonna be moving at a certain speed and then the, the background structures below it, might be hard to see in here, but these pillars I just dropped in below, you can see it in the viewport. Those are gonna be visible down there and just that, that's going to add so much depth that uh, it's going to be awesome. So um, if you can have like multiple planes, uh, like multiple levels of surfaces to kind of create that parallax sort of effect, that's often really nice uh, to, to add like a really large sense of depth. So I'm going to do a few more of those. Line them up here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be able to see the bottom, but we'll, we'll yeah, figure that out as we go. Let me go to the timeline and just kind of get an idea of where this camera is going to go. So I'm going to go to frame one and insert a location keyframe. I'm going to go to the end. Let's do uh, let's do 300 frames. Yeah, we'll do 300 frames. I don't need it to be super long or anything. And then we'll we'll just move the camera forward some amount. Doesn't matter how much. And then we'll insert another location keyframe. And now we're going forward to uh, to make this a little bit more customizable we can go into the graph editor and then uh on on this line right here we can say okay maybe let's start it a bit sooner and maybe let's end it a bit further away and that'll increase this, the overall speed let's maybe go a bit more extreme on that yeah maybe not that much it's a little bit too faster too much faster than i wanted so somewhere like that speed is going to be good i think um yeah that'll, that'll be nice I may render this at 30 frames per second, but I might just use Topaz Video AI to like bring it from 25 to 30, and that way it'll, I can render faster. Uh, I'm not sure. We'll figure that out at the end. Depends 
how this is looking if I have uh, or like how, how long each frame takes. That's usually what I do though right now is render at 25 frames per second or 24 and then bring it up to 30 frames in uh, in Topaz Video AI. I'm saying it like I'm sponsored. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I just, it's like a thing that I use. Sweeper showed it to me and I've been using it. Okay, so we're getting there, right? We're getting there slowly. Uh, I feel like this shouldn't be here. I need like some little structure here. Either like a pillar or... Uh, maybe, oh, maybe this. This could work. Yeah, like one of these would be nice. Okay, so let's actually put this material on here. Link material. And then I don't know if I want it in the middle or like somewhere around here. It's kind of cool in the middle. If I hit Alt, Alt G and then just kind of put that in here somewhere. Or, or maybe just a couple of them off to the side would be better. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, let's move them up slightly so they're kind of resting on this thing instead of sinking into them. Maybe I don't, I'm going to get rid of that pillar. This can come up a little. This can go here. Just, just you know, just trying things out, trying to figure out where all these things are meant to fit in here. And we could also do some like way, way out in the distance and that'll make it feel like this goes on for a long time. If I, move, if I put it too close to the light, we're going to start running into some issues, right? Right there is fine. Uh, I could move this back. I also want to disable shadow for this, the plane, like the image plane of the moon. I'm going to disable shadow, and then that, that way I can actually move the light behind here. Uh, sorry, disable shadow on this thing as well so that, there we go. So now I can move the light behind these objects, and these objects won't cast a shadow in front of all this stuff I want to actually cast light on. So that's good. This does not need to be this far behind this thing. I think this is supposed to be a little bit closer. So we'll just move that just, oh, oh, hang on a second. We could do like a eclipse render. That'd be cool. Oh yeah, let's do that instead. That's going to be way cooler. Okay, so change of plans. We're going to increase the brightness of this. And uh, yeah, this is going to be Okay, awesome. Yeah, this is gonna be cool. Okay, so here's where we're at right now. Uh, it's it's everything is fine. Like I could just finish it and it'd be done, but I just there's something missing where it just isn't different enough from that original render I showed at the beginning. Like the render I've already done and showed on this channel. So I'm gonna try and switch it up. We're just gonna try like something. I'm gonna just start dropping things in here and just see if I can get something in the next few minutes that switches this up. Yeah, this is getting crazy. Okay. Okay, so we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. Okay, last thing we need is very quickly, I have to go in a minute, so I'm going to try and just do this really quick. Last thing we need is a uh, particle system, uh, like a dust or like debris particle system. So I'm going to make a couple of like little things here. Uh, so we just need really quick, I'm just going to uh, subdivide a stupid little thing like this and just morph this into like the shape of what should be like a little rock or something this really doesn't need to be good at all it needs to be just roughly something rough like literally just something that isn't a square so we'll just do this get rid of these sharp corners right get that in there okay there we go we got one particle we can duplicate this sandwich it a little bit bring this in and then maybe just one more just scale it out this way and then like bring this in like this and okay so we got three things. We're going to link the stone material here. So control L material. It, it has the pattern. It shouldn't, but it's fine. You're not going to see it up close. Cube project that entire thing. Just scale it down a bit there. We'll scale this way down. Apply scale. And then we'll just bring this all closer together. Move this to a new collection. Call it uh, particles. And then we'll just kind of take this. Move it off screen. And then uh, we'll add a particle kind of domain here. So we'll add a cube over 
wherever the camera is traveling. So the camera is going from there to like there. So uh, see where the camera is moving from there to just there. So we'll have the particles extending a bit past that area right there. And then it can just be, you know, like this big, maybe a little bit, you know, further this way. Okay, let's quickly run through the settings. I ex have explained this way more in depth than I need to, but I'm sure you all know how to use a particle system. If you don't, it's very easy to find this information on YouTube. Just Google Blender emitter particle system, you'll find it. Okay, number, uh, I don't know, 3000. So frame start, we'll just do negative two-ish or negative one or whatever. Lifetime 400, just so it extends past our timeline. Uh, emit from volume, so it emits from the uh, volume of the cube, not the faces like that. Rotation, we need that on. We need to randomize all this stuff. Dynamic on, so that it actually rotates when we add a, a force field. Velocity can be zero, so it's not it doesn't have like initial velocity, so it doesn't stop moving when it spawns in. Render as collection. Collection will be the one we just made. Particles, and then uh, that's fine. Uh, so scale, we can just increase the randomness to full. That's going to be important. And then uh, field weights, gravity zero. And I think we're all good. We just need to bake it once I add a force field. So uh, apologies for going super fast there, but I have explained that before in the video. Um, there's a there's one on my channel called Surreal, <clears throat> Surreal Space Animation Breakdown. There's In that one, I explained this whole system very in depth. Uh, so you can go and find that if you want. But those are the settings I'm running through basically. Hopefully I didn't miss anything because I was quite fast. Okay, force field, turbulence, so that we have some kind of random noise. I'm going to increase this uh, strength to like to maybe 1.5. Size, I'm going to increase that up to like, I don't know, 5-ish flow. I'm going to keep that on 1. Uh, the reason I'm increasing the size is so it doesn't appear super tiny and swirly. Uh, I just like it with the size a little bit bigger sometimes. I hope that actually gives me the effect I want because I don't know the number for that off the top of my head, What what's going to work. Okay, let me bake this and let's just see what it looks like. So uh, everything's good except everything's also black. So we need to disable the show emitter in viewport and render. So take that off. There we go. We're back. Uh, okay, and then this could be a little bit bigger. I'm just realizing this can be a little bit smaller, thinner, and taller. Okay. Nice. And are these dust particles doing what I want? Yes, for the most part. Pretty much, yeah, that's fine. Uh, they're not like swirling around on really awkward ways. They're kind of just all moving without like changing course too much. So that's good. Maybe this could be a little bit wider. Um, I, I just don't want you to be able to see where it ends. So I'm going to delete the bake, increase this, maybe bring this up and this this doesn't need to come down anymore, but maybe it does need to come forward a little bit more. Let's maybe do 4,000 to 3,000, and then uh, maybe we just scale the whole thing up a little bit too. Bake that. And let's just take a look here. I just want to make sure there's none that are really, really close to the camera that are going to be a problem. So we'll just kind of go, wireframe's fine. So I'm just worried about any little bit or chunk that gets too close is going to be annoying, like, you know, stuff like this. When you see that up close in the in the render, it just might be bad. So maybe I'll decrease the scale down to 0 0.1. That should be fine. This is bothering me. I think this shouldn't be here. Maybe it's just this though. Let's take let's take that third hand out there. Um. I don't mind this thing there. It it, it's, it looks like a uh, thing I forgot to delete in my default file, but I think it just looks like that to me because that's in my default blender. And I think to everyone else, it'll just look like a little pillar, which is what it's supposed to be, which is what it is. So that's fine there. And my timer's going. Okay, I gotta go. I'm gonna render this and come back at uh, when this is finished.
I'm not exactly sure how this is all going to work together, but uh, I'm just going to keep messing around and kind of just trying out different positions to put this in. And then, uh, yeah, I think, I think I'll come back when I have this a little bit more figured out. Okay, here's where we're at right now. So it looks a bit different, but all I've done is I've kind of just shifted the colors from being this like yellow to uh, over to a more blue kind of thing. And I actually might drop that down a little bit. I, I do actually like a little bit more color in there. That's kind of interesting. But yeah, I'm just trying to figure out exactly how to make this all fit together. Um, ooh, that looks really nice having that a little bit more saturated. That's cool. So yeah, I just shrunk the moon thing, uh, this this image plane. I just put it on a circle instead of a square because I was going to try something else. But it's the same exact thing, just you know, PNG of a picture of a moon on a on a plane with the emission, you know, this running into the emission. I uh, just made it smaller. There's a point light here that's kind of helping uh, drive the lighting as well. And that's what we've got in here. It's not anything that crazy. Um, but I'm just trying to figure out how to make this all fit together. Yeah, but we just need some other structure around this. And I just don't... Oh, maybe a tree. Let's spawn in the tree from Botanic. Uh, let's just drop that here. And then line it up here. Uh, this, this tree is still not quite right, but I think this will work if I just find the right model in here. This could also be a spotlight too. Like maybe maybe we don't need a point light here. Oh, I'll just move this here to lighting one or a new collection. We'll just call it, yeah. Lighting one, we'll try some other lighting setups just to see what might work. So I'm gonna disable that. Let's just add light spot, bring this up. We'll just do something really bright and then uh, uh, blend up, uh, radius up, and then uh, spot size up a little bit. And then let's just see what we can do here. Yeah, I could disable the uh, volume scatter on this as well. I wish there was a slider for that so it wasn't just on or off. I'm sure there's a way to do that, but yeah, maybe, ooh. I don't know, that's like kind of insane, but also kind of cool. I don't know, that's interesting. This could be nice. Yeah, I like this lighting setup a bit more, I think. This will be much easier to work with. See, this one is nice because the, the shape of the tree is so clearly defined. But I just don't like how the actual tree looks. So I'm going to find another one. Let's try this one maybe again. Yeah, that's the one. Let's put another one or a, a few more of these kind of throughout here just to make it feel like this is a, you know, kind of expands way out there. Okay, here's a, here's a problem. Uh, I think I like how it's dark in the foreground at like this point. It's a little too dark here, but it's a little too bright at the end. So maybe I can like, this isn't going to be a realistic way to do this at all, but it, we're in a non-realistic environment here, so it might be fine. I might keyframe the spot size. So we'll just insert a keyframe there. On the end, I just want this to be coming in. So it's just barely, or kind of the same same amount of like gradient going from dark to light up as it goes up through here. So I'll just keyframe that. And then that way, it's actually following the camera as it moves along and we're not ending up in this really bright spot and a really dark spot in the beginning. So that might actually be nice. I think this one can maybe go a little bit higher here too. So that's good there. I don't know. Is this a different texture in here? Oh, it was. Okay. Interesting. And it might actually look interesting how this is kind of following the camera over time. You might not even notice it or it might look cool. I don't think it's going to look bad. It could, but I, I doubt it. And it, I don't see anything wrong with it in here. So yeah, that's fine there. I think we're getting, uh, since I disabled the, the volume thing for the main light, the main spotlight isn't actually affecting the volume at all. I think I want it to a little bit though. There's no slider for it, unfortunately. So uh, like when you disable volume scatter for this light, it's either like fully on or fully off. I want it a little bit in between. So what I might do is duplicate it, just kind of move it out of the way so I can select it easier. And then we'll turn it on for this one, but then make the strength way, way, way lower so that uh, so that it's uh, just barely affecting the volume, but not enough to be super annoying. I'm going to delete the keyframes on this because I don't want this to be keyframed, this one. I just want it to be a little bit in the middle. So see what that's doing if I hide this one on and off now. It's a little bit hard to tell in here. 
but just pay attention to the atmosphere of this. It's just slightly adding a bit more atmosphere where there wasn't any before. Um, but it's not so much, it's not so bright that it's like doing this kind of effect, you know, but we still get the bright lighting from the original one, right? So this one's doing the lighting, not affecting the volume. This one's much dimmer, but it's enough to just affect the volume and not really, it's, it's so much less bright than the other one. And you don't really notice it, whether it's on or off other than the volume. So that's good. Okay. I I'm ready to render this. Uh, I'm done with this now. Let's, uh, let's do this. 1080 by 1920, 24 FPS. I'll probably bring it up to 30 in uh, in Topaz. PNG sequence. Uh, we'll just back out of this one. Create a new one. Call this Final Render V2. There we go. So yeah, I just didn't like how it looked before because it, it was good, but it was just the same thing I've already made. So this is a bit different. So I'm happy to post this one. Uh, anyways, yeah. Um, I'm going to come back when this is done and uh, then we'll finish it up.